again, Adult Sunday School Leader. I hope you're having a great week so far. Hey, first off, I want to thank you for the, the YouTube thumbs up, uh, for the comments, the emails, and uh, even sometimes some of the Facebook posts that I receive from you guys. Even thanks for the occasional thumbs down I get from, uh, from, the, from YouTube. That keeps me humble, okay? I had an email correspondence uh, this week from a new Sunday school teacher who's just looking for some pointers. And uh, I'm certainly not the, the know-it-all when it comes to Sunday school, but willing to share any insight that I might have. So anytime you got a question or anything, feel free to email me. That email address, of course, is at the end of this week's video. All right, so this week, what are we doing? We're continuing in that unit entitled Living a Godly Life in an Ungodly World. This is the fifth lesson. It's called Remember God's Faithfulness. It's out of 2 Chronicles chapter 16, the first 13 verses. And the point of the lesson is, the God who guided you in the past will guide you now and in the future. So we're continuing to look at King Asa. Uh, and honestly, I don't know that I've ever studied him before. And so this has been a good study, uh, for me at least, to kind of acquaint myself with this king. Now, King Asa, up to this point in our study, he's had a pretty good track record, hasn't he? Uh, he's trusted God when his enemy outnumbered him and his forces. He, uh, his he had two campaigns that we know of to tear down the idols there in the kingdom. But King Asa's life doesn't end well. Uh, see, following God is a day-to-day -day decision. Now, let's think about this in a New Testament context. Salvation, of course, is that one-time event. That's when the relationship begins. But sanctification, that's a process. That's, that's uh, the intimacy of the relationship during that time can either grow stronger, uh, closer, or it can move apart. And so and that's all based on our actions. Salvation is not based on our actions. Sanctification, the growing closer or further away from God, is based on what we do. And that's where we find King Asa this week. He started off good. He had a relationship with God. He did great things. But the intimacy of his relationship with God grew colder in his later years. And you're thinking, now, wait a minute. I remember last week in our lesson in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 17, it says, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. So what's that about? Are we have, do we have a conflict in Scripture here? Was he or wasn't he committed to God all of his days? Well, I believe the chapter 15 reference is dealing with idol worship. If you remember, he, you know, he got rid of the idols in Judah. His influence didn't extend into Israel. And his heart was fully committed to God the rest of his life, meaning... He was never influenced to worship idols, only God. But you and I both know that just because you don't bow down or worship an idol, that doesn't mean that you are where you need to be in your relationship with God. And that's where we find Asa in this week's lesson. So we find ourselves this week in the 36th year of King Asa's reign. Now remember, he is king of Judah, the southern kingdom. The, ki the king of the northern kingdom of Israel is King Baasha. And for quite a while, Israel and Judah had conflict, uh, continuous skirmishes, and sometimes just outright battles. And you think, no, wait a minute. At one time, wasn't this just one big, happy, united kingdom? What, what's going on here? Why are they fighting against each other? Well, let me just remind you of our own country's history and the Civil War. That can happen in a country, all right? Now, one of the border towns between Israel and Judah was Ramah. And Baasha began to fortify this city, and this probably worried Asa uh, because he could see uh, Israel coming down, fortifying that, that border city, and possibly even moving down further into Judah uh, if, if they didn't take some action. So now, during this time, there was another country in the region. That country was Aram, capital in Damascus. Now, this country was east of the Jordan River, and east of what we now know as the Sea of Galilee. Uh, so as you're looking at the map and you've got uh, Israel and you've got Judah, and then up here you've got um, Aram. Now, Aram and Israel had a treaty. And Asa figured that, just like about everything else, the loyalty of this king and this kingdom, Aram, was for sale. 
And so he sent some gold and silver, not just from his own palace, but from the Lord's temple as well. If we remember from last week, Asa restored the gold and the silver to the temple. So he's, he's raiding that, uh, the monies there that he has stored in the, in the temple. And now he's taking that out to bribe another kingdom. Now, the ruler of Aram at that time was called Ben-Hadad. Uh, ben being son of Hadad uh, was the name of the storm uh, and, and rain god uh, in Canaanite culture. We know him as another name, and that's the name of Baal. So, got to be careful here, Mr. Asa. He's not worshiping idols, but he's consulting with and getting help from those who do worship idols. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, this is the chapter before Elijah and the prophet of Baals uh, meet up and have their show down there on Mount Carmel. Uh, Elijah told Ahab, here in chapter 17 of 1 Kings, that there would be no rain until Elijah, of course under God's direction, said that, that there would be rain. So that helps us. That gives us a little more meaning behind why the prophets of Baal hated Elijah so much. Because Elijah's God could control what their God was supposed to be in control of. All right, let's go back to our story. Okay, so Asa uh, basically sent a bribe to Ben-Hadad, and, and the price was right. Ben-Hadad uh, began moving forces against the border of Israel, and so Baasha had to withdraw his forces from the south and start going up here and fortify his forces in the north to keep uh, Aram from in invading his country. So that seems like a good political move, doesn't it? Well, here's the thing. He didn't put God in the equation at all. Didn't even consult the Lord on this matter. And so along comes this another, another guy. His name is Hanani. He's a seer. He's a prophet. He comes to Asa and he confronts him. And basically he says, remember how God rescued you in the past? And he gives him some examples. But since you ignored him, since you ignored the Lord in your decision-making this time, you are going to be at war from here on out. And the one thing that Asa tried to avoid was war. That's the one thing that's now going to be his punishment. And we can recall another king being confronted about his sin, can't we? Remember Nathan comes to David after the Bathsheba affair, but David's response was different. David repented. He sought forgiveness. Now, there were still consequences for that, but he sought forgiveness and, and repented of his sin. But Asa didn't do any such thing. Actually, he, he imprisoned Hanani, and he oppressed those who probably uh, were agreed with Hanani. And then we see in the last verses of our text this week, that uh, three years after Hanani came and confronted him, Asa was afflicted with some kind of foot disease. And even in this illness, Asa did not consult the Lord. He didn't seek the Lord. He only sought aid from his physicians. Now, then it says he died in the 41st year of his reign, uh, as his reign of, of king of Judah. So the, our verses this week, those 13 verses, cover the last five years of King Asa's life. So let's talk about some takeaways from this week's lesson. All right, so whenever you confront somebody biblically um, about their wrongdoings, about their sin, you got to remember they may or may not receive it well. Most people, when they're sinning, and we're talking about Christians here, most Christians, when they're sinning, uh, they're not in a good place to receive correction. Most people are not. Sin loves secrecy. And when sin is exposed, weaknesses are exposed, it's an ouch. It's, it's a retreat mentality. So don't be surprised if, if you do confront somebody that your words of warning go unheeded. Just like here, this, the, this prophet, this seer, Hanani. Because you could even lose a friendship over it. But, but still... Do the right thing and confront. Because by not confronting, you're silently condoning. Also related to confrontation, if you're the one, if I'm the one, if you're the one that's being confronted, listen and pray and be honest with yourself. Don't try to fool yourself and talk yourself out of, of what they're trying to tell you. Um, and especially if more than one person approaches you. You know, especially in ministry, you've got all kinds of people coming to you with different ideas and different things. And it may not be what you need to do or what you feel God's leading you to do in your ministry. But you need to listen because God may be speaking through them. But especially if more than one person approaches you on that, 
especially take it to heart and listen and, and pray about it. Uh, now, their advice may or may not be correct. Their advice may just be what they want. It may not be from God because we can remember Job and his friends and his wife even giving not so good advice. All right, so uh, doing this confrontation, this is how a church, a community of believers, this is how it should be. We should be brave enough to confront lovingly, but humble enough to listen prayerfully. All right. Another takeaway is just as I mentioned here in the beginning, just because we aren't blatantly anti-God, that doesn't mean that we're that we're where we need to be in our relationship with God. All right. So just some additional takeaways from this week's lesson. Continue to study your lifeway material. It's got a lot of great stuff and other great background information in there. So next week, we're going to conclude our study of, of King Asa in chapter 17 of 2 Chronicles, talking about leaving a legacy. All right, so don't forget to pray for your class. Uh, hope you guys have a great, great Sunday school lesson.